praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Father, we exalt you. Father, we love you. We honor you, Lord. We give you all the praise, Father. Have your way. Have your way tonight, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Good evening, One Church family. I'm so excited to be in your presence tonight. Uh, I'm so excited also for the prayer that for the prayer point that we are having today, which centered around hope. But before we go into today's Bible study, I would just like us, I would just want to appreciate our pastor, Pastor Paul and Pastor Fred for giving me this opportunity to share this word and study with you tonight. I know it's going to be an awesome moment before God tonight. Praise the Lord. But before we go into the word, I would like us to pray. Shall we just bow our heads and close our eyes even as we pray? Our Father and our God, eternal rock of ages, we have come before your throne of grace tonight. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. Giving us this opportunity once again, Father Lord God, to come and learn. For us to be able to appreciate your word. For us to be appreciated, for us to be able to appreciate the sacrifice that your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, paid that price on the cross of Calvary for the remissions of our sin. Father, we give you praise. We honor you. Father, receive all our thanks. Even as we learn tonight, Father, speak into our hearts, O Lord. Let your word il illuminate our mind so that we will be able to continue to be the light of the world that you have made us to be. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, everlasting Lord, for we pray in Jesus' name. I even pray tonight, O oh Lord, that the heart that we hear your word today, they will not just be hearers, they will be hearers and doers in the name of Jesus. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This morning, as we know, this is still our prayer month. And we have different topics for every day. Today's prayer point is centered on hope. If you are the prayer line this morning, you will find out that we talked about hope, uh, that, um, um, hopelessness, deliverance from hopelessness. Yes, that was our topic this morning. And this evening, we are going to continue in that attitude of hope. And this evening, we will be discussing on the topic, hope for the world. Hope for the world. And we will take our text from Ephesians chapter 2, from verses 11 to 13. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 13. I read, Therefore, remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called on circumcision by what is called the circumcision, made in the flesh by hands, that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Verse 13, it says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. That is the, that is the message for us tonight. In this passage, we will, find, we will say that Apostle Paul was actually addressing the people of Ephesians. And everything that he said to them as at that time also related to us even at this moment. Why? Because he was encouraging them for them to know where they, are, where they started from to where they were as at that point in time. Because they were like an outcast. Because why? Because they are not Israelites. And why? There was challenges concerning their faith in Christ. And there were so many limitations. Why? Because of the burden of sin. But Apostle Paul now tried to bring it to their knowledge that this is where you used to be. But right now, you were no more there. Why? Because our Lord Jesus Christ came. 
not just for you and I, but for the whole world. He came, he died on the cross, he shed that blood on the cross of Calvary. He died, and the third day, he rose again. And that shows that by the reason of that shedding of his blood, we have access for that grace of forgiveness of sin. And if there is forgiveness of sin, that means there is hope of eternal life for you and I. There is hope. That is where you hang on hope. That hope is because of our assurance that our Lord Jesus Christ has gone to heaven to make a place for you and I. And I want to encourage you tonight that no matter the burden of sin that you might have, no matter the circumstances, no matter the challenges, no matter the situation, I want to encourage you tonight that hope is always very key and very important. And why? Because if you look at the definition of faith, you will always find hope there because they always work hand in hand. Faith and hope. Being a substance and things that you hoped for. When there is no hope, brethren, it's like you have given up. When there is hope, it shows that you will continue to see possibilities. Why? You will continue to have that faith in God that there is nothing God cannot do. Even at the last minute, that God will always show up for you. Why? Because you have faith. If you have faith, you have hope. Why? Because they walk hand in hand. How do you want to testify of the goodness of God without having faith in him? Without having hope? Without belief? Without, without having that trust in him? So, when we talk about hope, we talk about faith. And we talk about trusting in the Lord. And that was exactly what Apostle Paul was trying to tell the people of Ephesians even to us today, that we cannot do anything without hope in Christ. Because we know that with God on our side, we can, we, can, we can overcome. With God on our side, we can do new things. With God on our side, we, can, we, 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 we sing the song of an overcomer. And because the Christ died on the cross of Calvary for the remissions of our sins, brethren, he gave us that hope that by the shedding of the blood of Jesus, that we have access. That shedding the blood alone has been able to atone for our sin. That is number one. Having access to the atonement from sin. Because of why? Because of the shedding of the blood. Number two, it assured us of divine forgiveness. When there is shedding of blood of Christ that has given us this hope of eternal life, I always assured us again that it has the power to forgive. When you made confession of your sin and you believe that Christ died for you and shed that blood for you, definitely you have access. You just need to believe. And that is where hope comes in. Believe. And number three, it said it's also guaranteed our future of eternal life. It also guaranteed our future for eternal life. Why? Because that is the hope that we are looking for, that one day Christ will return. And when he returns, he's coming for you and I. Why? Because he has already said it, that he's going to make preparation, he's going to prepare a place for you and I. Because the Christ in us is our hope of glory. If you do not have that faith in him, then what is the hope? What is your expectation of serving Christ? Of serving him? Of, 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 of reaching out to those that are yet to know him? It's because we are following through with his words and with his commandments. And that is exactly what God wants us to do. The last point, why the blood of Jesus, shedding of the blood of Jesus was very important for us, is for the fact that we are no more distant from God. The, 
the sacrifice that our Lord Jesus Christ has paid the old total sacrifice. And he has opened that connection back to God. He has given us that connection back to God. That means that we now have access. Access that have been denied over a period of time. And that is the more reason why we should be able to know the word of God. Because by the time you sleep on it, by the time you, you, you reflect on it every day, you begin to see the word communicating with you differently. And that is how God revealed things to us. And that is how God worked miracles in our life. And the fulcrum of Christ coming and dying for our sins is centered on the love of the Father. And if you look at John chapter 3 verse 16, our popular verse, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the love. It is the love of the Father that activated him to sacrifice his only begotten son to die for us so that as we continue to believe in him, what happened? That we will not perish, but we shall have what? Everlasting life. That is the hope. That is the hope that we are talking about. If you do not have that faith, if you do not trust in God for his ability to allow his son to come and die for us, then what is the hope? The hope is that one day we will be in heaven. One day we will have eternal life. We will leave this world with the ups and downs and challenges in this world. Definitely one day we are going to leave this world behind. No matter what we have been able to achieve here on earth, it's, 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 we will be left behind here. And Christ is telling us today, let us remain focused on him. Let us remain focused on him. Let us continue to increase our faith in him. Let us continue to walk in his vineyard so that by walking, we'll continue to strengthen our faith and we can continue to share the word of God with people around us and with those that are even yet to know Christ. The Bible says Christ in us is our hope of glory. Before we continue, I would like us to just look at what is hope? What is hope? Hope can be defined as the confident expectation of what God has promised. Confident expectation. You are so confident that if God says this is, going to, this is what is going to happen, exactly that is what is going to happen. If you say this will never happen, it will never happen. And why? Because that is, is the, is, 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 you, I mean, he's is a faithful God. He's a God that never fails. He holds true to his word. So, we are defining faith as the confident expectation of what God has promised and his strength in his faithfulness. There's so much strength in God's faithfulness. Whenever I decrease it, in, it comes to pass. The creator of the heavens and the earth, the mighty warrior, the Lord that never lost a battle. Yes, that is the God that we serve. And you can see the reason why hope is very important in our Christian life. Sometimes, if you don't want to use hope, you will use faith. Because they are used in the Bible interchangeably. And I want to assure you that we have hope in Christ because why? Because Christ never fails. Christ never fails. He holds true to his word. Number two, we have hope in Christ because we know that we have hope in God because we know he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He knows us. He knows everything that concerns us. He knows the challenges you are going through. He knows how much you'll be fighting to leave a particular habit behind. He knows how much you are struggling to just sacrifice that time for him. He knows. And he's going to repay you back even in hundredfolds. But, and he also knows that where, where you get to a particular point in your, child, in, in, your, in, in your situation, he knows when to step in. So he knows the beginning from the end. He's not ignorant of it. Sometimes when things get delayed, 
is, activate, is activated for a purpose. That means that there's something God really wants you to go through before actually releasing those things that you have been expecting, that you have been praying for, fasting for. That is still part of hope. If you say you have faith in God, you will wait. You will wait patiently for him. You will wait patiently for his promises. And we also have hope in Christ because we know that he can do all things. Another reason why we have faith in Christ is because it's our hope of eternity. It's our hope of eternity. Without Christ sacrificing himself for us, what could have been our hope? What could have been our, our, our faith of keeping to the promises of God? Is because we are assured of eternal life. That one day, you and I will be welcomed back into heaven and we will receive our crown. There are so many crowns waiting for us in heaven, brethren. Crown of righteousness. So many crowns that is waiting for us, for you and I. But why? How, how do we get there? It's by first of all acknowledging Christ. Confessing him. And receiving him. And walking in faith, in assurance of what God has commanded us to do. Another area that we will consider is, because, is that we are saved to serve. We are not just saved just for us to become a Christian. We are not just saved so that we can just carry that title of being a believer. We are saved so that through us, others will be able to come to Christ through us, so that people can see the light of God shining through us, so that we can continue to be the light to the world. Brethren, if you are the light to the world, anywhere you go, people will easily identify that there's a spirit of God working in this person. If you have not gotten to that level, brethren, go and pray more. You can't be ashamed of the things of God. We can't run away from it. We have a service for God. If we have received him as our personal Lord and Savior, then we need to reach out to others because that is part of the great commission that we have been commanded to do. We have also, we are brought near to God to also achieve the following. Where, what, number one, experience all of his grace. We are brought closer to God so that we can continue to experience this grace of God. It is by the grace of God that we are alive today. It is by the grace of God that we can do so many things. It is by the grace of God that you can go out and come back. Also, we can continue to discover and experience the power of his kingdom. Brethren, the, uh, the popular saying says that, a powerless Christian, a, 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 a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. If you are a believer that actually trusts in God, you will be a prayerful Christian. Why? Because then you will know the value of the power in the word of God when you pray. You can decree. You will decree it in the Bible says, and it shall come to pass. That means that there is power. When we acknowledge the fact that we are serving our Lord Jesus Christ, when we are actually receiving and we dwell on his word and we pray fervently, definitely he will manifest his power through us. Not just by laying of hands. You can sit in, your, in, your, in the comfort of your home and you will do a, I mean, conduct a prayer of supplication and the person, wherever that person might be, will receive healing. That is the power, the access that God Almighty has provided for us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Also, we can live a life according to his word and be the light to the world. In Titus chapter 3, verse 7, it says, That being justified by his grace, that we might become her heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This, that is our hope. Definitely, if you do not have hope, then why are you, why, I mean, why, why, why do you want to go through this, through this world, through the challenges of this world, only to lose everything? We know we are passing through this world. And that means that there will come a time that we need to exit. But when you exit, have you been reflecting where will you go? 
Can you be judged by the works that you have done or that you are doing for God? Can you be judged by your heart and the thoughts that you carry in your heart? Can you be judged by the things, by the sacrifices that you are that you are giving to God at any point in time that you are called to do. Those are the areas that we need to look at because why? Heavens is more important to us so that we will not be carried away with the things of this world. As we know that none of us are worthy by our own deeds, but we are all made worthy by the love of God in Christ Jesus. We must let people of the world know the truth that every person of the, on, in the, uh, on earth, irrespective of what they are going through, have this access to God. They should hold on to their faith. We should all hold on to our faith. The faith and remain focused in Christ. We should hold on to that faith that we have in Christ. Because why? The enemy always wants to attack us. And you find out that the heart of man is where that war normally happens. Because once you have re received Christ, there is a mark on you that this is one of those that have been marked for heaven. So the enemy will throw so many things at you, so many things to distract you in order for you not to be focused. But I'm telling you, brethren, we need to remain focused even to the very end. But how do we achieve it? It's by, it's by, getting, it's by giving our time, and our prayers and our, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, studying the word and be able to renew our heart all the time. This is where the world goes in. The moment the enemy finds out that there is no opportunity to penetrate, he leaves. But if you find out that there is so much space, then he will take advantage of it. And that hope that you think you have in Christ will begin to diminish. I've seen situation. I will give you a scenario. Uh, you know, when, you first, when we first gave our life to Christ, there's this passion, this passion that we have, that we can go to any extra length for God. And that passion is what drives us at any point in time when there's program, where, whenever they call, whenever they give us that the program will be taking place, we don't mind the distance. We always want to go the extra mile for God. And you will see it the moment, you will see, even see it with the time people come to church. Because people are so passionate for the things of God. But it comes a time that you find out that that passion begins to go down. And the one of the people that used to come with that passion, that used to come early to church, that used to have much time, more vibrant in the things of God, they will begin to walk back gradually. Gradually. You will not see them in the forefront of activities for God again. And the next thing, you, before you know it, uh, they will begin to sit very close to the door. Why? Because they always want to exit before the end of the service. That is not God's plan for us. God's plan for us is to remain focused even to the very end. I, can, I want to reassure you, whatever situation you are passing through, no matter the burden of sin, no matter what the enemy is trying to tell you that God cannot forgive you or that you can continue to, to, to sin and sin and sin, let me tell you, you don't give up. That's the lie of the devil. God has a better plan for you. And that is why you must keep focused. You must keep your hope on him. And we know that our Lord Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, is, our, is the hope for the world. Praise the Lord. So, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, it says that three things abide. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest is love. When I was reading John chapter 3, verse 16, you know, the fulcrum of that passage, the, for the reason why God sent our Lord Jesus Christ, is just for the fact that he, he, he was so much love. Because he has so much love for us. He wants to reconnect back to us. You know, in the Old Testament, there was so much shedding of blood of animals for the sacrifice of sin. For every form of sacrifice that was conducted there. Why? Because they must kill an animal, pass the sin across into that animal, and that animal has to be sacrificed. And the shedding of that blood of animal cleanses that person. 
But when Christ came, so many things changed. There is no more room for sacrificing any animal again. And why? Because he wants to reconnect us back to him through the shedding of the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And by that, we are able to have a passage and access back to him so that we can go back to God through our Lord Jesus Christ, so that whenever we pray in the name of Jesus, we get access. And, that, and if you look at that passage again, it says, and the greatest of them, love is love. Three things were mentioned there in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Three things. We mentioned faith, we mentioned hope, and we mentioned love. And out of the three, the Bible says that love is the greatest. You can see that three of them always work together. Don't think that, ah, even if I don't have faith, uh, even if I have hope, I don't need to stress myself about faith. As, as long as you are exercising that hope, you are actually working in faith. But the two cannot come into place when there is no love. The only reason why Christ, why God sent his son is because of his love for us. And that area was done and settled and reconciled us back to God. Praise the Lord. I am happy today because I know that my hope in Christ will not be in vain. And I'm sure your own too will not be in vain in the name of Jesus. Also, we should always remember that no matter what we are passing through in this challenging world, no matter the adversity that we are going through individually, even as a nation, we must always remember that Jesus is there to see us through. Just call upon him. Call upon that name of Jesus. In Psalm 20, verse 6 to 7. Psalm 20, verse 6 to 7. It says, For I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heavens with the saving strength of his right hand. Verse 7 says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Brethren, who do you put your trust in? Who do you put your hope in? Are you still hoping that is one pastor somewhere that will save you? Are you still hoping that is one bread and somewhere that will save you? Are you still hoping that is a craving image? Because there are still some believers that still have some craving image in the corners of their house, in the corners of their rooms, that they still go to a peace or they still have to connect with in order to get to God. Brethren, our God have eyes that he can see. Our God have ears that he can hear. It's not a craving image. So who do you put your trust in? Stop putting your trust in no other but on God. When you ask the pastor to pray for you, yes, we will pray. Even as fellow brethren, we will pray. But keep your eyes on God. Put your trust in him. Put your trust in him. If you fail to put your trust in him, people will come and walk on your mind and take you to places where you are not supposed to go. But if you are beginning to experience the love of God and beginning to experience the miracles of God, brethren, nobody will share God's glory again in your life in the name of Jesus. So also, we can also see in Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 that why the earth remains that the seed time and the harvest time the cool and the heat, the winter and the summer, and the day and the night shall not cease. What that passage is saying is that no matter what you are going through, no matter the level of doubt that the enemy has sowed into your heart, brethren, the word of God will always come to pass. It is just a process. Sometimes we, when we pray, we want things to happen immediately, 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 and God says, no. I want, you to take, I want to take you through this process so that I can groom you, so that I can prepare you, so that you can be ready for the challenges ahead. He, God has reason for not answering us immediately. He prepares us. And sometimes when we now have access, we will be able to be able, able to handle those situations and be able to see God 
making those situations happen. So, when, whether we like it or not, seasons must come and they must go. That means that you should have faith that your own time is coming. Your own time, your own time of breakthrough, your own time of healing, your own time of deliverance, your own time of salvation is coming. Keep building that faith in Christ. Keep on growing in the things of God. So we are going to look at Christ redeeming us from sin. Christ redeeming us from sin. If you really want to experience eternal life in Christ Jesus, then you should desist from sin. In Romans chapter 6 verse 23, it says, Romans chapter 6 verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That is our hope. The gift of God is not for us to die in sin. We have acknowledged that the shedding of the blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary washes away our sin. Because we know that sin, the eyes of God, the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord cannot behold iniquity. It cannot behold sin. God cannot see, whenever God looks at us and he sees sin, he made him to pass over. Because his eyes cannot behold iniquity, cannot behold sin. So, if we know, according to Romans chapter 6, 23, that for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, through Christ Jesus, then we need to believe in Jesus. We need to walk with him, we need to sacrifice, we need to give him our life. Because he is the one that is making preparation for where we are going at the end of time. Then, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all our sins are fall short of the glory of God. For all of us, no, nobody, nobody is the only person that is righteous is God. Because as long as we carry this flesh, we still find ourselves struggling. Even though we want perfection, we continue to walk through towards perfection with God helping us. But what we are saying here is that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. But there's grace for us. But there's grace for us. In Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20, it says, For the soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. What we are picking, what we are relating particularly in that particular verse is that the soul that sinned shall die. God cannot condone sin. No matter how we said we are righteous before God, as long as we still go back to sin, we are limiting the plans of God in our life. And we need to acknowledge that we need to renew our hearts every day. We need to ask for that forgiveness so that we can walk away from sin. We can't do it by ourselves. But the Lord will always send the Holy Spirit to help us. And that is the way we can get out of that situation. In Romans chapter 5 verse 8, it says, But God commanded his own love towards us. In that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. You can see the burden, of, the burden of sin. The burden of sin has tied us down. He has made us not to be worthy before God. He has made everything that we are doing before God to be limited. But there is hope for us. Why? Because it's, it, it, there is an assurance that because of the love of God for us, that why we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. He shed his blood for us. For the, God, for, the, for the forgiveness of our sin. For the cleansing of our sin. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You can see the process from the level of punishment of sin that has always been there till you get to the point 
that Christ died for us and shed his blood. Now, this passage is even giving us more assurance, more hope, that if we are in Christ, that we are a new creature. Why? Because all things have passed away and all things have become new. Don't let the enemy continue to take you to the past. If you have really given your life to Christ, then you know you are moving forward because Christ sacrificed all for us. You cannot allow doubt, allow enemy to still sow the seed of doubt in your life. Why? Because it will continue to take you back. It continues to give you anxiety and depression. It continues to war, give you more worries. Brethren, I've seen where people have given their life to God. I've seen where people that have committed atrocities, that have killed people, that have done worse things, beyond what you can imagine. They came out and they gave their life to Christ. And what happened? They are the apostles of Christ today. They are the one doing extra war for God today. Why? Because they know that they can't go back to their past. The, the Bible says that looking out to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Don't look back. Keep focused. Let us keep focused. Because why? God has a better plan for us. The Bible says that righteousness is a nation, but sin is a reproach. Salvation is from no other than God. He is the only savior of the world. He paid the final price on the cross. He was born without sin, yet he bore our sins and was crucified on the cross, died and shed his blood for us. So with God, with Christ, we do not have any room for any sacrifice again because he paid the price. In Isaiah, uh, in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6, Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6, it says, Seek him. While he may be found, and call upon him when he's near. Brethren, you have the opportunity now when you have the breath. You and I are still breathing. You have the opportunity now for you to reconnect back to God. Don't wait. Because there will come a time that will be that time will not be there. The Bible says we should call upon him when he's near. What is that time that when that is near? It is now. We should always call upon him every now and then. We should not stop. Because why? Because he's ready to listen to us. He's a loving father, a faithful father that cares about his children. And for, for because we know that we are his children, he cares a lot for us. So let us cry to him at any point in time. Let us reconnect back to him. Let us have faith. Let us have that hope that whenever we call upon him, he will answer us and he will deliver us. The Bible says that seek him first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Keep focused, keep seeking. Keep hanging him, keep hanging on him because he's there waiting for you, patiently waiting for you. And why? Because... <laughs> The love of the Father is so much. And that, that was the more reason why he gave room to each and every one of us to come back to him. Are you willing to come back to Christ today? Are you willing to begin to strengthen your faith in him and begin to increase your hope of your eternal life in him? Brethren, there's no better time than now. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, and he said unto and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in your weakness that is the word of god for you today that my grace is sufficient for you no matter the circumstances that you find yourself god grace is sufficient for us it's sufficient for me it's sufficient for you why did you just tap into that grace? That grace is sufficient for you. It's sufficient for me. And he said, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Whenever you think you are weak, whenever you think that you are not perfect before God, 
Whenever you think you have done things that make you so imperfect, that makes you so that you makes you feel guilty, why don't you just go back to God? Because He knows your ability, He knows your struggles, and He's saying today, "My grace will always be sufficient for you." Tap into that grace. Let's tap into that grace, and with that grace, that grace of God will see us through and take us to the ne- to the next level. By his grace in Christ Jesus, in Jesus' name. So, we are moving towards the end. And another area that we want to consider right now about hope is that we should keep trusting in God. And we should remain focused on him. Keep trusting on God and remain focused on him. How will you serve a God that you do not trust? You must trust God. You must trust him for his word. You must trust him with your faith. You must hope in him that whenever he says something, that anything that he decrees that he said, that he must have said in his word, he will always stand to perform it. In Isaiah 40, 31, he says, Those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Wait upon him. Wait. Trust in him. Trust. Those who wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up their wings like eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Brethren, these are things that will solidify your faith. These are words of God that will keep the hope alive in you. That when you wait upon him, he will renew your strength. And if we mount up your wings like eagle, you will run and you will not be weary. And you will walk and you will not faint. What level of assurance do we want again, brethren? Whenever I read this passage, I get fired up. Why? Because sometimes the enemy just wants to come and, 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 uh, uh, and manifest, in a, manifest himself in a way that he will begin to want to distort your thoughts. Because you have been waiting for transformation, the enemy will want to slow you down. Because you have been waiting for financial breakthrough, the enemy will want to slow you down. Because you have been waiting for your healing, the enemy will tell you that hope delayed is hope denied. No! It's saying that my, you shall renew your strength. Wait upon me. Wait, wait, wait on me. And I will be there, and I will be there for you. And whenever you, and you have no other place to turn to other people than to turn back to Christ. Don't give up. Keep focusing. Keep moving. Keep the prayer life up. Whether it has been answered or not, keep forging ahead. And the Lord will answer you in Jesus' name. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, it says, looking up to Jesus the author and finisher of our faith. Who do you look up to? We have read that passage that said some people put their trust in chariots. Some people put their trust in horses. But we will we put our trust in God. Look up to Jesus because he's the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was said before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and I sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I remember there was a time when we had a quiz. Then, when I was just getting to know, uh, grow my, uh, my spiritual life. And they asked this question. They said, where is Christ right now? I know if I ask this question right now, that where is Christ right now? A lot of us, we answer that Christ is in heaven. That is the easiest answer we can give. But I want to tell you that, yes, Christ is in heaven. Where exactly is Christ? Christ is seated at the right hand of God. That became very interesting because all of us gave the same answer. But what am I trying to tell you, brethren, this morning? Is that our Lord Jesus Christ is the author and finisher of our faith. Are your faith been wavering for some time? 
have you been exercising doubt? Have you been discouraged? Did you stop coming to church because you are discouraged? Did you stop fellowshipping with other brethren? Because why? Because you are discouraged. I want to tell you, Christ in us is still our hope of glory. Don't give up. If we have given up, let me tell you, I don't know what could have happened because the enemy we call, we just make a very good laugh of all of us. Why? Because he knows where you started with Christ. This is not the time for us to be at the back seat. This is the time for us to take the mantle, to take the challenge, to evangelize, to go out, to reach out, to preach the word in boldness, in confidence. Because why? Because we have hope in Christ. And whatever we commit unto his hand, he said he will do. He said wherever you go through fire, he said I will be there with you. He said wherever you go through the water, he said I will be there with you. You remember the story of the three Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were going through fire and he showed up there for them. God has the ability to show up for you at any point in time. He has showed up for me and that is why nobody can preach Christ to me. If I want to start my testimony today, we will not live here. But I want to tell you, I've experienced God in so many ways. And that was more reason why we always have to pray for the manifestation of the fruit of spirit in our lives. If you experience the fruit of spirit manifesting in you, brethren, you will go places. I'm not even talking about, I'm talking about the fruits now. Why? Because... So many attributes of those fruits are the attributes that God himself possesses. So, do you see why you need it? We all need it. And in Psalm 62, verse 2, it says, He is my rock and my foundation, my God that never fails. I shall not be moved. Is uh, my rock. The Lord my God is my rock and my salvation. Is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. That is from a believer. And I want to believe that that is your, that is your faith and your hope tonight. And I want to believe that that is your confession tonight. That is your rock and your salvation. And is your defense. And you know that you shall never be moved. Why? Because your, your, your faith is, is resolute. You are so resolute in the faith, in, in, in the things of Christ, that nothing can shake your faith. Nothing can move you out of the grace of God. We know that our God is a mighty warrior. He's a God that never lost a battle. Have you ever seen God losing a battle before? No. The battle over your soul, over your family, over the situation that you have found yourself, is God that will fight it and deliver it for you. Because why? He's a mighty warrior. He's a mighty deliverer. Nobody can stop, no matter how great the army of, of those nations are, they cannot stop the work of God. They cannot stop the power of God. We know that in uh, Psalm 24, verse 8, it says, Who is this king of glory? Is the Lord that is strong and mighty, the Lord God Almighty. is mighty in battle. I remember then when we are trying to go into warfare, we, sing, we always use this passage to sing and charge the environment. So that the enemy will know that this is not an area that he can come. You can't come. We can't come near that particular time. You can't just come near us. Why? Because the environment is that the Holy Spirit, the fire of the the fire of the Holy Spirit has taken charge. Because why? You are calling upon the mighty warrior, the mighty God Himself, into that battle. And God always show up, and you will see. You will always have reason to testify. Why? Because. God does not fight a battle without leaving something for you to cherish. He fights your battle. He will continue to fight your battle. And you will continue to be a winner in the name of Jesus. In Numbers 23, 19, he gave us an assurance there that God is not a man 
that he should lie. Neither is he a son of man that he should repent. As he said it, and he did not, he will not do it, or as he spoken, that he will not make it good. <laughs> Anytime I remember this passage, brethren, I go to sleep with peace of mind. Because when I have fired, when you have fired that prayer, and fired that prayer, and fired that prayer, brethren, there's some assurances that God will begin to reveal to you that how many of my promises have I failed? How many times have I wait, have you waited on me that I've disappointed you? And why? Because it's there in his word. Many things that we need to confess when we pray. There are times when we use our own words to pray. There are times when we want to use our own words to grow our faith and our, I mean, to hope in God. But let me tell you, use the word of God more. Use the word of God more. And whenever he says that God is not a man that he should lie, neither is, is a man, a son of man that he should repent. There are two immutable things. Yes, I remember during the Bible college, is the late to emphasis there that one, God cannot lie. He never lies. So that means that he's true to his word. He's a faithful father. And God cannot repent. Why? Because God cannot sin. God can't sin. When we say that, when, whenever we say that his eyes cannot behold iniquity, that means that sin is always the one that is taking us far and far and far away from God. We must find a way to do away with sin. His, his blood, his blood had, been, had been shed for us. Let us lay claim to that. And is, in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1, he, say, he says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save you, that it cannot save you and her, that, that nor is his hair, that it cannot, that his hair heavy, that it cannot hear us. The Lord is always paying attention. He's ready to hear us. He's always available. He said, call upon me in your days of trouble, and I will deliver you, and I will save you. Trust in the Lord. Let us continue to put our trust in the Lord. Our God is a mighty deliverer. He can deliver us from every worries and from every sorrow. In Psalm chapter, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall do what? He will direct your path. Trust in the Lord. I don't know where else we want to put our trust in. Continue to trust in the Lord till that day that you will receive your miracle. Till the very end that you will exit this world. Some people, probably because of what they have gone through in life, and they believe that, oh, God didn't remember me. God, don't, don't ever allow people to come and tell you that. Because God knows us. He knows every year in our head. He knows us by name. He knows you. He knows what you are going through. So trust, continue to trust in him. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, we should always remember that when we put our trust in him, we are not fighting a physical battle. Why we are putting our trust in him, spiritually is fighting battles on our behalf. Battles that you don't know anything about. Battles that you have not even seen. Battles that are from generation to generation. Battles are from household wickedness. Battles are territorial, territorial oppression, wherever the location you are living. Every prince of Persia that is walking in around that environment is walking, is deleting them, is destroying them on your behalf. And that was the more reason that you can't just you can't just fight this battle by your own ability, by your own power. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. What are strongholds? Strongholds are problems that have been there that you have been praying, 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 praying. 
that it look as if it will not get solution. I say today, because we have a God that can do all things, a God that can perform miracles, I say today your miracles will come in Jesus' name. There is no solution that is hopeless, except Christ is not, in, except Christ is not involved in that situation. The Bible says that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. He sacrificed himself for us because of his love for us. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 5, I'll be closing shortly with this. I'll be, shorting, I'll be closing shortly. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 5, he says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. And I will not leave you nor forsake you. Brethren, this is the promise of God for you tonight. That Christ in us will always be the, our hope of glory. That because we have Christ, we have hope. We have hope for our future. We have hope of eternal life. And he's telling us that he will not leave us nor forsake us. I don't know what you are feeling. I don't know how many times you have tried. I don't know how many times you have given up on hope. Because people still give up on hope. But let me tell you, Christ is reminding you today that I'm always available. I'm always willing to deliver you, to walk through you, to uphold you and lift you up. And God's plan and purpose will always be fulfilled in our life. Sometimes when we wait, when we want some things instantly, particularly for the miracles of God to happen and it's delayed, yes, it can affect our faith. But let me tell you, it's good to wait. And you always have to have this conviction that no man shall share that God's glory. No man, no man. That glory will always go back to God. Why? Because huh, it's only him that can save. Because it's only him that can deliver. Because it's only him that can work it out for you. So, are you still casting doubt? Have you lost hope? Are you in a situation of hopelessness? <laughs> Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is still the hope for the world. He's the hope for the world. Keep your hope and focus on him. He loves you. He has made up his mind to sacrifice his only begotten son on the cross of Calvary by shedding of the blood so that our sins can be forgiven. And not just that, he has collected the power of death from Satan. He has the power over death. He's an immortal God. He's a God that cannot die. We serve a living God. So I'm calling upon you tonight. That what is that situation that look hopeless? I'm going to pray. In the next two minutes before we round up, I'm going to pray. And I want you to trust God tonight. If you really believe that this message, this Bible study tonight is resonating with you, I want you to act with that faith tonight. That this, from this moment, there are miracles that are waited, that have delayed, that have been delayed so far, that have been delayed this long, that God will work it out for you today. Let us close our eyes even as we pray. Our Father and our God, we have come before your throne of grace. You have been able to talk to us tonight that we should hope that you are the hope of the world, that we should keep our hope and our faith in you, that we should trust you in season and out of season because you are always working it out. Father, I call upon your name tonight as your people are are praying unto you tonight concerning every aspect of their life that they'll be waiting upon you. Father, you are a God that can perform miracles. You are a God that can perform wonders. You are a God that answers prayers, oh Lord. Father, I pray and I decree into the life of your people tonight that from this moment, oh Lord, they will begin to experience the peace of God. That those difficult situations will begin to receive life. They will begin to receive answers, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, 
Jesus. And they will begin to come forward to testify of your goodness, O Lord. I said from tonight, O Lord, we will begin to live a life, O Lord, that we glorify you. We will begin to walk, Daddy, O Lord, with you, Daddy, O Lord, by our side, O Lord. We pray, O Lord, that we will share your word, O Lord, to those that are still lost in the world, O Lord. And through us, O Lord, we will win souls, more souls into your kingdom, Father, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, O Lord. Daddy, you say you will not leave us, you will not forsake us, O Lord. Let your presence go with us, O Lord. Anywhere we go, let your presence go. Let your presence be made manifest, O Lord, in all our undertakings, Father, Lord God. Father, Lord God, we know you are a prayer answering God. You are a faithful Father, and there's nothing impossible with you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, because you know you have heard us tonight, O Lord, for we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Stay blessed.